Hi, Dr. Dave here to demonstrate a variety of cushion and point compression shots where the cushion or point needs to be deformed to make a shot possible. Let's start with the classic kick out of a frozen trap. If the cushion did not deform, the cue ball would hit the object ball after rebounding. Here's the shot. Here it is from above. And here it is in slow motion with a faster speed shot. Notice how the cushion deforms. And notice how the cue ball has lots of clearance on the rebound. At a more shallow angle, it is even easier to clear the obstacle. But here, backspin is required to bend the cue ball to the target. In my previous video dealing with bank and kick effects and aiming adjustments, I showed the following variation where the obstacle ball is instead placed at an unfavorable angle. I had actually never seen this done before. Every time I've seen people demonstrate this shot, it was always from the perpendicular position. As you can see, with cushion compression, the cue ball still has plenty of room to clear. You can also kick through a gap that seems too small, like this. There is only a ball width gap to go through. Without cushion compression, it would be impossible to get through clean. With a shallow angle, you don't even need much speed, as with this two rail kick at the eight. You can also bank a ball out of a frozen trap. You can even bank a ball through the gap, but because you can't bend the bank back as with a backspin kick, here I bank off three rails. Here's another fun cushion compression shot, the old knock a coin into a glass trick. In slow motion, you can clearly see it is the cushion compression that launches the coin into the air. The cue ball doesn't even touch the coin. This shot is from the video encyclopedia of 9-ball and 10-ball, or vent. The 6 is frozen to both the cushion and the 8, so it looks like there is no way to combo the 8 into the corner. However, with enough speed, the 6 will compress the cushion enough before hitting the 8 to change the angle of the hit. Freezing the video frames, we can see the action of the shot. Here, you can see the blur of the 6 as it compresses the cushion and comes into the 8 at the right angle. And here, we can better see the line at which the 6 comes off the cushion. Here is another shot from Vent, where I need cushion compression to get a rail first hit for cue ball control with spin. I'm shooting at the 5, which is frozen to the cushion, and need to get up table for a shot at the 6. The right play here is to stun across the table with left side spin to send the cue ball up table off the opposite cushion. If I hit the 5 first, or hit the 5 while compressing the cushion, the side spin will take on the cushion after the hit, causing the cue ball to head down table, where I might hit the 8 or 9. So here, I need to hit the cushion first, hitting the 5 after the cue ball has mostly rebounded off the cushion. Here's the shot. In slow motion, you can clearly see the cushion first hit. The cue ball is clearly interacting with the cushion already before hitting the five. I needed to aim farther in front of the ball than you might expect. Here's a close up of the hit on the cushion and ball. Here, the cue ball is just about to hit the cushion. Look at how far in front of the 5 ball I am aiming. Here, the cue ball has reached close to maximum compression. Here, the cue ball has just about finished rebounding from the cushion and is about to hit the 5. This is just after the hit. The cue ball overcut the 5 slightly, but the 5 still easily went into the pocket. Here's another good example where I can use cushion compression to make a shot not otherwise possible. The 13 blocks a direct look at the 8. 
The closest I can get, if I barely miss the 13, is here. At slow speed, there is no way to pocket this ball. But with enough speed, the cue ball compresses the cushion, just like in the last shot, and we can get the 8 for the win. Here it is, in slow motion. Here's a similar example. I can make the 13-9 combo, but the runout is extremely difficult because the 14 is so well hidden. Now I need to work hard to try to get the out. That was a good effort, but it didn't work out. A better option is to cheat the angle on the combo. This doesn't work at slow speed, since the ball doesn't compress the cushion enough to allow for the angle cheat. With enough speed, I can shoot straight into the 13 and have it compress the cushion enough to still pocket the 9. And I can leave an easy shot on the 14 for the out. With bank shots, one must always be aware of possible double kisses. Here, I am trying to bank the 8 cross side. Even at fast speed, the double kiss is very difficult to avoid. Here, an option is to use very fast speed and overcut the ball slightly to go twice across like this. If that pocket were blocked, I could even go across three times, like this. Even at this angle, the double kiss is still a concern. But with fast enough speed, the 8 compresses the cushion enough to give the cue ball time and room to clear out of the way. Here, I was barely able to pocket the ball with very fast speed. I barely avoided the double kiss, barely got my bridge hand out of the way in time, and barely pocketed the ball off the far point with pocket rattle. If I shift everything toward the side pocket, you might think the double kiss is unavoidable since the bank angle is now steeper. Here's an example double kiss. However, because the 8 is so close to the pocket facing, which is stiffer than the cushion material, I can overcut this some. With enough speed, the cushion compression allows the cue ball to clear, and the stiff pocket facing helps shorten the bank angle. You need to overcut this shot way more than you might think is possible for the bank. Again, the stiff pocket facing material causes a much steeper rebound angle than normal. With a cross corner bank this straight and away from the pocket facing, there is no way to avoid the double kiss with a normal shot, even at fast speed. The only option is to jump into the ball with speed, like this. The fast speed causes the 8 to compress the cushion to give the cue ball time to rise up a little with the above equator hit. The 8 still double kisses the cue ball, but it retains enough speed to keep going toward the pocket. This is a really tough and low percentage shot, and I was not able to pocket it after about 15 attempts. Here are my best attempts. Obviously, this shot would go with the right hit. Now let's look at some point compression shots. Here, it might look impossible to pocket the 8 because it is too far outside the pocket point to cut it in. However, with enough speed, you can compress and drive the ball through the point into the pocket. That went in easily. Here's another good example. 
I can't hold the cue ball for the 8 if I cut the 13 in, even at very soft speed. I do not have a clear look at the 8 here. You might think I could cheat the pocket and hold the cue ball, but it doesn't work at slow speed. But at fast speed, I can compress the point and drive the ball through while holding the cue ball for the 8. In this example, I am corner hooked. If I try to shoot directly at the 8, the point deflects the cue ball. I could hit a swerve shot to curve around the point. But if that and other options are blocked, my only option is to compress the point a little with faster speed like this. To show you that I don't always make my shots on the first attempt while filming these videos, here are my previous attempts where the pool gods were obviously against me. These last two shots don't really require point compression to work, but they certainly involve point compression, and they are fun and interesting to try. The 5 and 7 block all reasonable jumps and kick paths off cushions. However, you can hit the cue ball off the side pocket point to create any angle you want. These shots are actually not very difficult after a little practice. I hope you enjoyed my collection of cushion and point compression shots, and I hope you learned a few new tricks to add to your arsenal. For more information and demonstrations, see the links in the video description. I want to thank Bob Jewett for providing some useful suggestions for several of the shots in this video. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.